Proclaim a joyful sound and let it be heard. Proclaim to the ends of the earth, the Lord has freed his people. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You're very welcome to Mass today on the sixth Sunday of Easter. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass, we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. <coughs> Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honour of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter reached the house. As Peter reached the house, Car Cornelius went out to meet him, knelt at his feet and prostrated himself. But Peter helped him up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man after all. Then Peter addressed them. The truth I have now come to realize, he said, is that God does not have favorites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came down on all the listeners. Jewish believers who had accompanied Peter were all astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit should be poured out on the pagans too since they could hear them speaking strange languages and proclaiming the greatness of God. Peter himself then said, Could anyone refuse the waters of baptism to these people now they have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have? He then gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterwards, they begged him to stay on for some days. The word of the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. 
The Lord has made known his salvation. He has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Ring out your joy. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My dear people, let us love one another, since love comes from God. And everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Anyone who fails to love can never have known God, because God is love. God's love for us was revealed when God sent into the world his only Son, so that we could have life through him. This is the love I mean. Not our love for God, but God's love for us when he sent his Son to be the sacrifice that takes our sins away. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him and make our home with him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. This is my commandment, love one another, as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I shall not call you servants any more, because a servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my father. You did not choose me. No, I chose you, and I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you anything you ask him in my name. What I command you is to love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Malcolm Muggeridge, a well-known TV personality in the 70s and 80s. Well, him and a TV crew were making a documentary on Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, as you know, who later became Saint Teresa, Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Now, Malcolm Muggeridge and his crew they wanted to film her and her sisters in the actual place where they worked with the dying. But they had a problem. It was quite dark and there was insufficient light for filming. They had no proper artificial light either, but they decided to proceed anyway, despite the fading light. To their surprise, the film turned out beautiful and the light was just perfect. It was a sort of mysterious warm glow that was surprisingly bright. Now Muggeridge, who later became a Christian and a Catholic, was absolutely convinced that the light came from the love emanating from Mother Teresa and her co-workers in that home for the dying. Now, remember the story in the Gospel where Mary Magdalene anointed the feet of Jesus with very expensive ointment in the house of Simon the Pharisee to his obvious displeasure. The scriptures tell us that the whole room was filled with the scent of the perfume. Now, if we love Jesus like that, like Mary Magdalene did, the fragrance of our love 
will circulate widely as well. One of the prayers of Blessed or Saint John Newman was this. Dear Jesus, help me to spread your fragrance everywhere I go. Flood my soul with your spirit and light. Now the love of God brings light and warmth into every situation if we want it. So just like the sun's rays warm the earth, so the light of God's love will warm our heart, our hard, often stony hearts, if we let it. Of course we can always shield ourselves from the sun and live in a house where the drapes are always drawn. Instead of receiving, receding into the darkness, Jesus wants us always to bask in the light of his love and not allow the powers of darkness to deceive us into thinking that God doesn't care about us or that his love is an illusion. When St. Therese of Lisieux was dying, she died at the age of 23, she heard a mocking voice which insisted that God had deserted her and that there was no afterlife. The only way we remain, however, in the light of God's love is by obeying his word. But having said that, he doesn't withdraw his love for, uh, from us even when we behave in an unloving way ourselves. Just like the sun does not cease to shine when the sky becomes overcast, just like today. We may ex distance ourselves from God, but he doesn't withdraw his love from us. It's we who reject God. God does not reject us. To prove his love, to prove his everlasting love, Jesus lay down his life for us, his friends, he calls us. We are his friends. It is only with a close friend that we can share our inmost heart. Now, staying in the sunshine of his love is another way of saying that we hide nothing from him. Jesus said, you are my friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. So when we enter into prayer with God, we're completely open to him. We're hiding nothing. We're straight with him. We're completely in the light. What did Adam and Eve do when they sinned, when they wanted to go into the darkness? They hid from God among the trees of the garden because they couldn't face him after they had sinned. Now, I think when people say they don't believe in God, it may just be they can't face God because they have elected to stay in the dark. Jesus did say on one occasion that people prefer the dark to the light because their deeds are evil. It was easier to deaden the voice of God coming through Adam and Eve's conscience than to come out into the light now we do know, just like today, the sun sometimes disappears beyond the clouds. It may sometimes appear that Jesus has lost interest in us and is not responding to our prayers, just like when he ignored that Canaanite woman's request in the gospel for Jesus to heal her daughter. But she wouldn't leave him alone. She kept coming after him until she got what she wanted. He'll answer our prayers too if we keep his commandments, the most important of which is to love one another. Then our prayers will not go unanswered. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. 
will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. If you love me, keep my commandments, says the Lord, and I will ask the Father, and he will send you another paraclete to abide with you forever. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.